Welcome people of Planet Earth and all planets beyond. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh. Today we're going to talk about the plethora, the cornucopia, the rainbow of vintage Levi's tabs and what they can tell us. Uh, but first, uh, I want to mention that this video is sponsored by WeBuyAllJeans.com. These guys are the best in business. If you're trying to sell your old vintage denim, please talk to them. They've got the best rates. They're really good and knowledgeable about the product, and they can help you out whether you're looking for an appraisal or looking to sell directly to them. Uh, they are our vintage Levi's sponsor, so we thank them so much for sponsoring this video. Now, I previously made a video about Levi's tabs, but I only included like a handful of tabs and left out a lot of really important ones that I get questions about all the time. So I want to update that video. I want to get a better video out that's more comprehensive with more information covering more combinations of Levi's tabs. If you know your color combination that you're looking for, just check out the chapter with that color combination and hopefully we can help you identify it. A uh, quick disclaimer, uh, these are, we're only going to cover vintage tabs. So anything that's 20 years or older. And even though I've covered all the major tabs and a lot of the obscure ones, I probably have missed a couple. So just bear with me. The first tab we're going to look at and the most important, the flagship tab. That is the red and white tab. This is the standard. This is what everybody thinks of when they think of Levi's as the icon. Uh, this tab was introduced in the 30s. Originally only had one side. Uh, that was printed on. That was Levi's with a big capital E on one side. Then in the 50s, it became a double-sided tab. And in 1971, Levi's introduced the lowercase e spelling on the red tab. And this would replace the previous big capital E spelling of Levi's. These are two major transitions in the red tab. And since then, there hasn't really been any changes thus far. Now, speaking of that big E, most of the tabs that we'll have on this list could possibly have a big E. And it's important to also note that Levi's has recently started using in the last decade or so, uh, the big E again on their premium quality jeans. So if you see a pair of Levi's with a big E, it used to be a really good indicator that they were vintage. Now you have to double check a couple other things. That's why I have a whole series of videos you can check out in the eye above, helping you with all of those questions. The next tab we're going to look at is the orange tab. The orange tab was produced from 1969 all the way to 1999 and I think briefly for a re-release in 2017 or something like that. Uh, but Levi's used this orange tab to denote their more fashion forward trendy uh, clothing. So a lot of stuff that was produced under the orange tab line was flared, was very on trend at the time. Uh, Levi's moved all their bell bottoms and flares into that line. They even moved some other stuff that was produced in the 60s into that line. Uh, Orange Tab has a variety of 505s and 550s and that all mimic the red, the red Tab versions, but maybe a little bit less quality build, something like that. Uh, but generally, these are always going to be from 1969 all the way to 1999. And inside the Orange Tab, there are many different sub lines. You have to remember that uh, there are a variety of lines. In fact, the orange tab sort of skew numbers are probably much higher than the red tab uh, over the years. So you have to remember that we're going to bring back the orange tab a couple times later. So just be aware of that. So another tab we need to look at is associated with the orange tab and that is the feather tab. Oftentimes it's going to be found with an orange tab and a black feather or something like that. Um, but this like the fresh produce is a sort of a sub line in the orange tab line. Uh, it got its own unique tab. I'm not exactly sure what the feather was for, but I've noticed that I always find it on lighter weight denim garments, typically like bell bottoms or flare pants. So it might have to do something with the weight of the denim or the material, just being more lightweight, being more flowy and uh, easier to wear. But this was a relic of the mid 70s to the late 70s, maybe even to the early 80s. Uh, so if you see that, you know that you've got a pair of pants or a pair of jeans uh, from that mid to uh, mid 70s to uh, early 80s time period. Next up, we have the white tab with black lettering. This is one of those tabs Levi's use for all kinds of things. Uh, primarily in the 60s and 70s and into modern day, they primarily use it for their corduroy and like cotton twill pants. And that will be generally what you will find them on, though you can find the white and black tab on lots of different other random things throughout the years, like Levi's for gals, you can find it on there. You can find it on uh, some student women's student jeans in the 80s. 
and so on and so forth. I know that the white and black tab is very common on pants today uh, for Levi. So just be aware of that. The white and black tab typically is corduroy and like cotton twill and then a little bit of women's stuff uh, in the 70s and the 80s. Then we have a silver tab line, which was denoted by a gray tab with white lettering. Uh, this line ran from the late 80s to the early 2000s and was focused and marketed to like skateboarders and those with more baggy jean inclinations uh, and sort of capture the baggy jean trend in the 90s. Uh, these are really beloved jeans, uh, but they almost always will have that gray tab and white lettering. So if you have that tab, uh, you can be pretty confident you're looking at a pair of jeans from that era. Though I do know, or I heard recently that Levi's have been re-releasing some of that gray tab with white lettering, so under the silver tab line. So just be aware, you might have a modern jean. Just gotta double check. The next tab is also a silver tab, though it is not necessarily a silver tab. Uh, it actually predates silver tab, and it is a silver tab with red lettering. This one confuses a lot of people because Levi's, before they launched the silver tab line, had a line called the Silver Metal Jeans. And they used that silver and red lettered tab uh, from the mid 80s, I think into the early 90s, where it was basically discontinued and we never saw it again. But it's a small subline that confuses a lot of people. There are some connections, I think, to the silver tab line. Some of the uh, silver metal jeans did have like a more baggy feel or fit, looser, relaxed, stuff like that. Um, but generally there's not a direct correlation between the two. Next, we're gonna look at the black and gold tabs. These were black tabs with gold lettering. They were primarily used to denote Levi's Stay Pressed Pants, which were released in 1964 and basically ran until the 2000s. I'm not even sure when they ended, but they were produced for a very long time and they might still even be produced today. Sometimes these Stay Pressed jeans actually had a brown and gold uh, lettering tab, so just to be aware of that, I think it was mostly for color coordination. Uh, but the black and gold almost always will represent a stay pressed pant. Now here's a tab that has a variety of colors, but a primary design that we want to focus on, and that is this carrot tab. This carrot tab can come in like a white and orange or a black and white combination, but this tab denotes the fresh produce line, which was connected to the orange tab line. So some fresh produce items under that line were produced with just a normal orange tab, but some of them had the carrot as well. This carrot, uh, denotes the fresh produce line, which was more popular in Canada than it was in America, but is actually becoming a sort of a resurgent in uh, modern Levi's collectors. There's a lot of cool and unusual items that the fresh produce line produced. This line was introduced in the 70s and seems to maybe have run into the 80s, but not too much further than that. Now back to a red tab, but this time a red tab with gold lettering. And this one's pretty interesting. There are two sort of varieties you can find this jean in. One is the more common, but very still very rare, uh, Levi's gold standard jean, which was produced in the mid 80s and into the early 90s. It really is sort of a forgotten line. Nothing particularly special about it, except that it had a red tab with gold lettering. I guess it was supposed to be like higher quality or something, but I've seen a number of them and they don't feel any better than the standard stuff. So jury's out on that one. But before that, Levi's used the same combination to uh, denote Levi's jeans that were produced specifically for gold medal winners of the 1984 Olympics. I actually have a video about that. Uh, you can check out in the eye above. It's really cool, um, really interesting story, uh, but there are only a handful of these. So if you have one, make sure that it's not a gold reserve pair of jeans. And if it's not, you might actually have something pretty rare. So that's pretty cool. Next up, we have a black tab with white lettering. There's not a lot of great information about this, but it does appear that the primary use of this tab was used in the like mid to early 90s, specifically to denote uh, like youth or boys jeans, maybe even almost always husky style, like bigger style for kids. Uh, they may have used the black and white for other random things here and there, but it seems like the primary use of that tab uh, was for early to mid 90s jeans made for huskier boys or just boys in general. Now here's a tab that lots of people get confused by and it's this bronze tab with like brown lettering. Uh, and lots of people confuse this because they don't know where to put it, but there's a lot of them. Uh, they find them pretty often. In fact, I probably have like three or four pairs in my collection right now or my inventory. Uh, these jeans were jeans under the 540 comfort line that were sold at like Kmart and Walmart. 
They are for big box stores. They were men's generally speaking, and they were basically about stretch and comfort. Uh, they're not typically very desirable as they are mostly made with stretch fabric, so the quality isn't very high. Uh, but these were produced from it looks like the mid 80s all the way to the early 2000s so lots of people find these uh, and they think they've got something really unusual and it is kind of unusual but uh, they're quite a bit more common than you think and they certainly don't have the quality that uh, the red tabs or the orange tabs tended to have next we have the pantella tab all right quick correction it's panatella not pantella i had pantera on the mind i guess this is a Levi's line that I believe started in the sometime in the late 60s and into the 70s and into the early 80s. And I'm not sure exactly when it was killed off. But Levi's Pantella was like suit jackets and dress shirts and uh, stuff like that. More like office casual or office business casual stuff. Uh, that actually has some pretty cool stuff in it. And some of it actually has a lot of demand. So uh, pretty cool. But you know this tab by the fact that it just literally says Pantella on it. It won't necessarily have Levi's on the tab says Pantella on it. So just be aware if you see that tab, oftentimes it's in white, but it can come in a variety of other colors, uh, probably mostly just to match or complement the color of the garment. But that is a Levi's Pantella tag. Next up, we have the black tab with orange lettering, and this is sort of a proto orange tab. And here's why that is in the 60s, I think maybe, maybe even as early as the late 50s, Levi's released this black tab with orange lettering and it was used for some unusual designs like the 606 Super Slim. And these were sort of uh, slimmer fit jeans, which was not that common at the time. Straight leg was almost all the rage until these slim fit jeans started to appear in the 60s. And there was a couple other types of pairs for this. A lot of times they were used for uh, more casual student designs. This was essentially the beginning of what Levi's would eventually transform into with the orange tab. And so there's a lot of stuff from this line. It basically runs all the way from like the potentially the early 60s, maybe late 50s into the late 60s and basically was killed off in the production or introduction of the orange tab line. So take the 606s for instance, they started out as that black tab with the orange lettering and eventually were produced under the orange tab line with just the orange tab and the black lettering. Because these were produced before 71, they should all have a big E. Next up, we have a cool tab. It's called the Levi's Family Denim Tab. Uh, this is one of the more unique tabs that we'll see on this list. In the 40s and 50s for sure, uh, Levi's had this line that was for like family casual clothing for women, moms and kids, etc. Um, and a lot of these designs uh, were pretty unique and uh, hard to find for sure. Uh, but this tab is displayed horizontally and it actually has like the whole embossed logo or like the whole logo there. This logo actually is used now by the Levi's uh, vintage clothing line, which is pretty cool uh, for all their reproductions. Uh, so to see that on a tab is pretty dope. It might throw you off if you see it. So just be aware that it's there and be aware that if you find it, it's pretty old. Now, the next tab we need to talk about is the tab for the Levi's for gals, which was a line from the 60s into the 70s, um, basically faded out by the 80s. Um, but this tab is uh, unique because it comes in so many different varieties that I create a list and I think I've exhausted the list and then I find some more co combinations. So I'm not even gonna try to do that. I'm gonna show you a variety of color combinations here, but point out something that seems to be unique about the Levi's for gals. As we previously mentioned, Levi's changed their logo on the tab uh, to be spelled uh, with a lowercase e in 1971. Previously, they had spelled it with a uppercase e. Well, it appears that for the most part, Levi's kept the Levi's for gals tab the same. There are a million different combinations, maybe not a million, but like at least 20, it feels like. Uh, and they all correspond to coordinate with the color of the jean or the pattern that was on them. Levi's for gals has lots of unique designs. So they, instead of just giving one uh, tab to represent them, they made the tab uh, match the jean and complement the jean. Uh, but one way to sort of notice them and identify that they are Levi's for gals is that they're gonna almost always have a big E. Uh, if you notice that, you can go in and look in the inside and see if it has uh, any other tags that says Levi's for gals. But that's one way to identify it. Just be aware if you find a really unusual color combination, uh, let's just say like yellow and red or something like that, you're probably looking at a Levi's for gals uh, pair of jeans or a pair of pants if it has that big E spelling on it. So anyway, that's a really confusing one, but just be aware there's a million different combinations and you may have to look at other information to get more 
closely identified to the garment. So next up we have a blue tab with gold lettering. This tab was used on a pair of Levi's from the Moving On line, which was like a late 70s, early 80s line that evolved out of the orange tab line. A lot of those uh, Moving On jeans are gonna have an orange tab, but some of them have weird tabs like a blue and gold. And I think you can also find a couple other random combinations as well. It probably was coordinating with the jean design itself, uh, but these are pretty sort of fashion forward, really trying to capture the, the moment. Uh, type of Levi's jeans. I have a whole video about them in the eye above. The next color combination we're going to look at is the white tab with blue lettering. In this case, a lowercase e for sure. This tab seems to be used. I can't really find a lot of good information about it, but it's only found on, or at least mostly found on Levi's denim jackets from the late 80s to the early 90s. A lot of times these jackets seem to have unusual lengths for their arms and torso dimensions. So Maybe it's some sort of special thing. Maybe it was just a really trendy thing that was sold at big box stores. Not really sure. But if you find that white tab with blue lettering and it's not like a biggie or something, you're probably looking at a jacket from the late 80s to early 90s. So that list is probably 98% of all of the vintage tabs that you're ever gonna find. We wanna thank our sponsor, WeBuyAllJeans.com again. If you have vintage Levi's or vintage denim that you're trying to sell or identify, talk with them, or you can talk to me, drop a comment in the comments below, or find me on Instagram, and I can help you out the best I can. Again, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.